my name is Anand. Uh, currently, I'm working as a staff engineer uh, at Zscaler. Today, I'm going to present uh, production grade Kafka on Kubernetes. We'll see how Kafka can be uh, inbuilt as a first class citizen in Kubernetes so that uh, people who are familiar with Kubernetes, they, they will have a, a ease of deploying Kafka. So uh, we'll look at the agenda first. So we are going to uh, cover introduction to Kafka. We are going to look at Kafka capabilities, a typical traditional deployment, um, and how the StreamC project is going to help us in, in this overall design. Uh, we'll look at the overall deployment architecture, uh, Kubernetes operator design for Kafka, and uh, we'll look at a demo as well. So uh, Apache Kafka. So uh, basically for folks who are new to Kafka, I'll just take another five minutes to quickly uh, brush you through the concepts like Kafka is an event streaming uh, technology, it has a capability to handle trillions of records. Uh, uh, it is essentially a commit log with a basic data structure. Uh, since being created as open source by LinkedIn uh, in 2011, it has it has been pretty much being used as a full full fledged streaming platform. Uh, uh, brokers are actually a cluster of Kafka brokers handles the delivery of messages, and a broker uses these Apache uh, Zookeeper for storing the configuration and for the cluster coordination. Typical leader election uh, mechanism is also taken care by the Zookeeper. Uh, Capabilities are microservices actually uses for sharing the data. Uh, highly useful uh, if a data requires a high throughput, low latency, uh, guarantees messaging ordering. Uh, it provides a rewind replay kind of a mechanism so that you can reconstruct your complete, complete application state. Uh, message compaction is uh, provided. Uh, you can horizontally scale your cluster configurations replication of data to control your FT modes, uh, retention of high volumes data for immediate access, all of these you kind of get with Kafka. Uh, so some of the use cases is of course, uh, uh, it's very popular in event driven architectures. Uh, also used in event sourcing to capture changes, uh, message brokering, activity tracking, uh, operational monitoring through metrics, uh, log collection and aggregation. Uh, of course, commit logs and this for the distributed systems, but also stream processing so that applications can respond in the data real time. So majority of pipelines, uh, if you are building pipelines, uh, Kafka would be the central nervous system in that pipeline. Uh, so there are certain concepts and terminologies. Let's uh, go by them quickly so that you will be understanding uh, uh, what we mean. So broker is basically a server or a node that orchestrates uh, the storage and passing of uh, messages. Topic is actually a more of logical, but it provides a destination for storage of data, and each topic is actually split into partitions. Uh, cluster is a group of broker instances. Partitions, basically partitioning takes a single topic log and then breaks it into multiple logs, each of which can have a separate node in the Kafka cluster. This way, the work of storing messages, writing new messages, and processing existing messages can be split among many nodes in the cluster. So partition is a key uh, concept in uh, achieving your high availability concept in, in Kafka. Uh, then you have a partition leader, which handles all the producer requests. Then you have a follower, which can replicate as well as consume the request. So in total, Kafka cluster comprises of multiple brokers. Brokers contains topics that can retrieve and store data. Topics are then split by partitions where the data is written and then partitions replicate across the topics for fault tolerant. So uh, let's look at <coughs> uh, uh, the uh, typical component interaction. Uh, so you, here you can see the Kafka cluster, uh, which we actually consider as a broker. And then you have a, a zookeeper. Uh, uh, these uh, internal communications are managed uh, with TLS. And then uh, if you want to build on top of it some metrics, so you will have a Kafka exporter. If you want your clients to be talking through HTTP, you can have a Kafka bridge. Uh, if you have use cases where you want to uh, integrate an external system directly to the Kafka or your Kafka needs to directly send the data to an external system. So that's where the Kafka connect comes into the picture. We can use the source connector and sense connector uh, to do this integration. And then Kafka mirror uh, basically allows you to uh, kind of 
uh, replicate uh, mostly used for the data replication scenarios and then yes uh, that's that's pretty much uh, a typical kafka component uh, you would see uh, let's look at a traditional deployment um, so we create we will if if just imagine if there is there is no strimzy project how would you look like how would you look at a kafka deployment or a kubernetes uh, environment so basically we will create stateful sets because uh, you need persistent volumes you need a stateful set uh, in the end to make sure uh, your logs your commit logs what you are actually storing are uh, quickly accessible so you are going to create stateful sets for zookeeper and broker you are going to deploy these replica sets manage these endpoints for external access you have to manage the versions of all the resources remember that for a given broker version you need to have the right zookeeper version as well uh, then you have to build your own observability stack you have to perform upgrades rollbacks manage the scalability challenges uh, and then you also will have to build a lot of tools to just maintain this complete stack so it's complex uh, and just imagine if you look at a production grid scenario where you have more than 100 brokers more than 20,000 partitions uh, how would that setup would look like uh, it's going to be very complex given that uh, you have to manage all of these resources and that's where Shimsy comes to comes to our rescue so Shimsy provides a way to run uh, a complete Apache Kafka cluster in Kubernetes it provides lots of uh, deployment configurations so for development it's as easy as just running it on a kind and on for production it gives many capabilities such as rack awareness uh, deploying on different availability zones uh, applying taints tolerations making sure kafka runs on dedicated uh, nodes all of those is possible um, and then uh, it also allows us to expose kafka to end clients in a more uh, secure way it, prov it provides access like a node port load balancer ingress and open shift routes uh, also in security it provides mtls cramsha and uh, a, a layer of authentication plus authorization uh, use cases as well uh, the cube native management of kafka is just not limited broker so basically uh, Shimsi allows you to uh, manage even the topics, users, mirror maker, connect everything using using the custom resources. Uh, so uh, it's it's kind of one stop shop for you to deploy ev everything related to Kafka. This means now we can get more and more familiar with Kafka Kubernetes processes and tools to manage our complete Kafka application. So. The whole idea is uh, make Kafka the first class citizen in the Kubernetes world. Uh, now it gives the benefit to all of our SRE because for them uh, they are looking at Kubernetes resources and now even our one of our critical application is behaving like a Kubernetes resources only. So that's where the, the, the Shimsy project comes handy. Uh, let's look at some of the features. It allows you to deploy and run Kafka clusters, seamless installation, seamless deployment, uh, upgrade process. You can manage all the Kafka components. You can manage the different dependencies as well. Uh, whenever you're deploying a particular version of a, a broker, it will make sure it will spin up the right version of the Zookeeper as well. Uh, it makes sure a, a very configurable access to Kafka. Uh, it provides a secure way of accessing. Uh, upgrading Kafka is uh, easy uh, apart from all of the uh, deployment process you can also use the same for uh, creating and managing topics and also managing the users so uh, all in all uh, anything related to Kafka is being managed so you don't have to look at any external tool to manage these things so let's look at the design so uh, in Shrimsy majority of things are actually governed by operators different operators uh, have their responsibilities so here if you see the cluster operator is responsible to manage and deploy your complete Kafka cluster so that will be uh, responsible to upgrade your brokers upgrade your zookeepers making sure you are uh, uh, having the right deployments right set of uh, 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 replicas running all of that will be kind of governed by, by the cluster operator uh, the topic operator is pretty much managing anything related to Kafka topics. So you can actually create Kafka topics on the Kubernetes uh, using the Kubernetes CRs and similar goes for the user operator. So in general, now you are, uh, you are actually giving the, uh, uh, the operators more power 
to actually manage your Kafka clusters. Uh, on the same hand, you also have the isolation of the roles, what it offers. So in fact, it offers that if you're not interested to use user and top, you can only deploy the cluster operator and just use it for the cluster management and use uh, any other Kafka toolings to create the topics and users. So uh, it, it does support uh, these uh, different uh, deployment options as well. Let's look at the uh, the complete uh, deployment architecture, how it would look like uh, in in a, a, a particular scenario. Uh, I, I want to present a more of a 10,000 feet view, how you would see a Strimzy based project getting deployed on your Kubernetes cluster. So left hand side section actually talks about uh, your Kubernetes cluster where all of your client applications are running. Uh, uh, and uh, sorry, the right hand side is actually all your or uh, all your uh, services where your clients are actually connecting to the front side, which is your actually your Kafka deployments. So here is where uh, your you will be deploying your Kafka, and uh, these will be running on dedicated nodes. So here you can see it's running on a, a dedicated Kubernetes cluster. It has it is under a Kubernetes uh, Kafka namespace. And then you can see we have also divided them into different availability zones. So brokers as well as zookeepers are on different availability zones. And you can see uh, it has been exposed as a load balancer service. So any services which are uh, trying to communicate with the Kafka will be using this load balancer service. Of course, there are different ways to expose this out. You can have the ideal production practices to have both of these, uh, uh, typically in the AWS scenario, both of these uh, VPC speared, and you mostly expose this NLB as an internal NLB, so that you, uh, so basically the internal NLB will make sure that no outside access is granted only the applications can actually uh, communicate with these uh, load balancers. Similarly, uh, you also have a scenario where uh, your SREs can actually uh, uh, communicate uh, uh, more efficiently. So here you can see uh, they will be actually directly talking to the operator. So let, let's look, uh, look at uh, the use cases how your Kafka would, would work, right? So here you can see an operator which actually goes and deploys and manages your complete deployment. Uh, your operator actually talks to API server and constantly reconciles, makes sure you have the right number of replicas of your brokers and, uh, and your zookeepers running. Uh, and also uh, SREs can actually run the CRs and make sure that they can build more uh, tools on top of it. Uh, kind of create a Kafka Connect model or or a Kafka Mirror Maker. All of these are kind of then uh, honored based accordingly after your Kafka is deployed. So a major most of the times uh, uh, the zookeeper uh, load balance service are never exposed outside unless until there are certain uh, use cases where you want to do debugging. Otherwise, uh, mostly it is restricted uh, uh, pretty much to to the SRE or ops teams only. Um, so what what it is uh, uh, holistically when you say there is a, a complete Kafka uh, uh, system or an ecosystem which is needed. So uh, what Strimzy offers is a complete set of uh, ecosystem uh, which is needed uh, on a production grade uh, systems, right? So. You can look, we, we just discussed about the Kafka components like broker and zookeepers. We also talked about a Kafka cluster operator, which uh, kind of allows you to upgrade and manage, uh, maintain your operators. On the other hand, uh, uh, you also have these Kafka resources operator, which is uh, uh, for, for mostly creating these topics and users. Uh, you have an observability stack, uh, which allows you to uh, generate metrics out of your uh, resources and track those resources and also create alerts on top of it. It's, it has a very nice uh, set of configurations. A uh, lot of open source uh, uh, configurations are available, which you can actually tune with it. 
uh, Shrimp Se comes up with a lot of uh, uh, sample Grafana dashboards which we can use to actually export all of these uh, to kind of look at all of these uh, metrics. Uh, then we also have a cruise control capability where you can make sure all of your load, all of your brokers are evenly balanced. Uh, it identifies uh, anomaly detection to make sure that uh, none of the brokers are uh, put into some thresholds. Uh, it also makes sure that uh, 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 you can you can actually avoid throttling based on CPU, based on requests, based on memory based on the events coming in, uh, you, you have many options based on the number of topics, based on the number of resources being used. So you can also make sure that any given broker is not overloaded. Uh, all of these capabilities can be taken care with the cruise control. Cruise control is another uh, interesting project from the LinkedIn and uh, uh, it, it kind of makes sure that your cluster is uh, evenly balanced uh, on, a, on a scale system. Then you have a connectors ecosystem. It's 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 one of one of the ways where you can optimize uh, how you communicate with external systems. Uh, uh, very classic use cases. If you if you are actually generating events onto the Kafka uh, and you want to actually send this data back to some external system, you don't need any microservice. You can directly have a connector, a Kafka connector. Uh, for example, here in this case, uh, we have done for Snowflake, we have done for Neo4j, where you can interconnect the data right from Kafka events to Snowflake tables, all of them happening directly with the help of the connector. Uh, on, and on the other hand, uh, you can also mention how many number of tasks can be running, running on that particular Kafka Connect model. All of those are also configurable. Uh, and then uh, Kafka Bridge comes where you want to have an HTTP connection model uh, rather than having a, uh, a, a general TCP connection that is also supported. Uh, Kafka Mirror Maker gives you the disaster recovery solution for your complete Kafka system. Uh, 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 currently, uh, uh, the more uh, prevalent and used uh, is Kafka Mirror Maker 2, which actually uses Kafka Connect a design pattern to, uh, to do this complete uh, disaster recovery. It also supports active-active, it also supports active-passive, both, both the ways. Uh, and then plus you can actually build more and more tools on top of it like something like a Kafka UI uh, a simple Kafka uh, cowl based UI you can actually just embed into it now the great thing about this is uh, your complete project is uh, a very much extensible Shrimzy allows you to plug and play all of these components very easily and uh, kind of again on the same side have a way to kind of manage all of these resources on a central plane so let's let's look at the demo. Uh, we'll 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 see how things work. Okay, I have an operator running. Uh, I'll just show you my project structure just to make sure that I have nothing deployed. So currently my cluster looks like this. Uh, I only have an operator running, and I you can see the operator logs running here. So let's go ahead and do a deployment. So I'm going to deploy a CRD. We'll talk about the CRD in a minute. Uh, and let's look at the operator. Okay, it's some action has happened and you can see here, uh, it has created this. Let's go and look at the activities which are happening here. So it has started to create a zookeeper uh, first and uh, you will see that with, with the CRD, uh, we are making sure uh, your deployments are streamlined, it is sequentialized. Uh, you will first deploy the zookeeper and then only you will deploy the brokers. And all of this is taken care by the, uh, by, by the streams itself. You can see now uh, the zookeeper is running and it will uh, schedule the broker uh, immediately. And we can actually also look at, yeah, you can see the broker has also started. Uh, another way to look at this is just by doing uh, kubectl get Kafka and basically uh, you are now able to track Kafka resources using a Kafka CR. Now this is a one stop shop for me to look at everything related to Kafka. This says that I have, I need one desired Kafka broker and one desired uh, replica for my zookeeper and that's it. It gives me something called as ready and warnings. 
unless until it's not ready i will not uh, allow the connections to be open to my end clients uh, if there are warnings i can make sure that unless until i fix those warnings i will not allow i will not make sure my connections are open so uh, here it will we will make sure that the zookeeper kafka is running and then we are also running an entity operator entity operator is nothing but basically it's, it's it has three containers which are like a topic operator your uh, user operator and other uh, sidecars uh, which which kind of combine together as an entity operator unless until all of these are running this will never show up as ready and uh, basically if I just do a uh, describe on this so you can actually see uh, the complete CRD here uh, we'll go in detail about the CRD but uh, the status will always make sure that unless and until this is not met uh, we will not open up the connection uh, here the deployment is still in progress yeah I can see the uh, this is also done now if I try kubectl get Kafka I should see that it is already ready uh, everything looks good uh, let's look at all the components what are all there available and we can see uh, it creates a set of pods uh, you can see these are the three pods one is the broker the other one is the zookeeper and this is the entity operator it has created certain load balancers and one load balancer is for an external bootstrap and the other one is for the kafka uh, broker and then you can see uh, an entity operator which is a deployment that's the pod for which you can see and these are the two stateful sets actually the kafka and zookeeper both are stateful sets so basically just with the crd we have actually <coughs> deployed a complete kafka cluster and uh, you can actually see all of these resources available you can just keep on increasing the number of pods, number of uh, brokers, and number of zookeepers. All of this will get added, and you you have to manage only the CRD. Let's look. Let's look at the CRD for a minute. Uh, yeah. So. So this is this is the CRD we have used, and uh, here in the CRD you can see uh, what what all we have. Uh, we have an external bootstrap. Uh, this is the particular uh, uh, kind of an endpoint which we expose out. Uh, uh, we have a support for NLB. Uh, we have support for making it internally exposed rather than making it outside. Similarly, uh, we have affinity strategies. Uh, we have like pod affinity and affinity. And just remember that this is a kind of Kafka. This is the, new, the CR which we are using coming from the API version Kafka Shimzio B1 Beta 2. Uh, and then we assign some replicas. Uh, you can just update these replicas and redeploy, and there will be a new uh, a number. Uh, there will be new uh, brokers coming up. Uh, you have different options of uh, exposing the endpoints. Uh, we never we never uh, recommend uh, something like a TLS false, uh, kind of a, a unsecured uh, uh, load balancer for for external usage. We, we always uh, recommend something like an MTLS base. It's just as simple as making this as true. All the certificate management will be managed by Shrimzy. Similarly, uh, you can have a Scram Chef 512 based mechanism as well or a combination of TLS with authorization as well. Um, you, the, the interesting thing is you can use storage as uh, JBODs and make sure you can have multiple volumes available with it. Uh, so as and when you have more and more load coming in, you can just add number of volumes and these volumes will get attached to your uh, existing brokers. And all of the configuration, whatever is possible, which is supported by Kafka, you can actually mention all of these here and Shimsy will inject this as part of your broker and your zookeeper deployments. So anytime or you make any changes here, the rolling update happens for all of these pods. Uh, it also supports uh, uh, making sure that you can have deployment on a dedicated node groups as well. You can have taints, you can have tolerations, all of that is also supported. Similarly for uh, Zookeeper as well, we, we saw all of these. And these are the entity operator which contains a user topic operator and a user operator. And then we have also used a cruise control to make sure that we can provide some capacities and make sure that your pods never go beyond these capacities and if it goes, it kind of then uh, give you some hard goals and give you some suggestions and optimization goals based on which 
you can actually uh, trigger those optimization plans. So this is a single single blueprint for me to deploy a complete Kafka rather than looking at different resources. I play around with these values and I can have uh, my uh, my Kafka deployment uh, uh, kind of triggering based on the change happening on this because for, for any change event uh, there is a reconciliation happening by the cluster operator. So uh, that's what I wanted to present in the demo. These are the references uh, we have. You can look at the website, the GitHub project. Uh, you can look at the uh, the the Slack channel, Strimzy on the CNCF project. Uh, uh, we will 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 help you if you have any interesting use case. We'll help you to get you guys onboarded uh, with Kafka. Uh, that's what I that's that's what I had to cover. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, please uh, ask questions if you have any. I'll be happy to answer them.